Hello, you are welcome once again to English at Home, and we are in class already. So you can invite all the people who are getting late to arrive that we are starting immediately. And I hope you enjoyed our last uh, week lesson on the uh, on preposition. And I want to touch it a little bit. Let's do few minutes revision on the preposition as our manner is. All right. So we define the preposition. As a word used to show relationship between two grammatical words. Yes, a word used to show relationship between two grammatical words. We also said it could be defined as a word used with the noun or pronoun to show their relationship with other words. in the sentence. That is very interesting. So we use some sentence examples like Tunde is angry with his friend and we marked friend and we marked with say preposition. So we had uh, she kept her pen in the bag in as preposition don't worry, I will wait for you. For That's preposition. And Adaku shared her oranges among her friends. So we saw wait in for and among as preposition. With the promise that we are going to do a more elaborate study on the preposition in our subsequent lessons. Uh, but today, what we have is the conjunction the conjunction that's going to be very interesting you have your pen and your paper please make sure you're making personal notes conjunction You know that as the word conjunction, as the word implies, you can even begin to understand its function from the word junction. Yeah. No, a junction where roots join, which means when we say conjunction, we are talking about something that joins. Okay, so we are going to define the conjunction. The conjunction is a word used to join or combine two words. Or sentences. All right. Used to combine two words or sentences. Okay. Uh, well, but if you can still remember what I told you is the is one very important value of the pronoun to a noun, that the pronoun is used to curtail or to limit or to avoid the unnecessary use of the same noun in a sentence. I think the conjunction does something similar to that. What the conjunction does is, it helps us to avoid the uh, unnecessary repetition of 
certain expressions in the sentence. Without the conjunction, we're going to have very long sentences. And we're going to have a repetition of the same expressions in the sentence. So that is what a conjunction is. It's a joiner. Yes, the conjunction joins. It brings sentences together and then shortens the length of the sentence. So we're going to see some sentence examples of the conjunction. Let's see number one. My father fought in the Congo and the Vietnam Wars. That's number one sentence example. Number two, the president was sick but not dead. Number three example. I will travel to Abuja or Lagos next week. And number four, every night I say my prayers before I go to bed. Okay. We're talking about conjunction here. I'm going to underline the conjunctions in the four sentences. My father fought in the Congo and the Vietnam Wars. And the president was sick, but not dead. But I will travel to Abuja or Lagos next week. Or every night I say my prayers before I go to bed. That is before. So you look at those sentences very well. I had a conjunction, joined those sentences. My father fought in the Congo and the Vietnam Wars. The president was, was sick, but not dead. I will travel to Abuja or Lagos next week. Every night I say my prayers before I go to bed. Now, imagine that we didn't have the conjunction. You see, number one sentence would have read this way. Would have been something like, my father fought in the Congo War. My father fought in the Vietnam you see, this should have been two sentences. Even if it was to be one sentence, it should have been, my father fought in the Congo War and my father fought in the Congo, in the Vietnam War. So you see something like unnecessary repetition of the same expressions. So the conjunction helps us to curtail or avoid the unnecessary repetition of the same expression. So you see now, my father fought in the Congo then we didn't need to repeat, my father fought in the Vietnam. So we have to say, my father fought in the Congo and the Vietnam Wars. Now number two, the president was sick but not dead. The president was sick but not... Okay, sorry, what I was trying to... 
assuming that we did not use the preposition. All right, would I have something like the president was sick? The president was not dead. Unnecessary repetition of the same expressions. I hope you are understanding that. All right. And number three sentence would have been, I will travel to Abuja next week. I will, that is maybe, if you like, maybe I will travel to Lagos next week either this or that number four should have been every night i say my prayers every night that you may like add then every night I go to bed. <clears throat> All these are unnecessary repetitions of the same expression. So the use of the conjunction has shortened the use of words and made the sentences more easier and simple. Uh, uh, to make the sentence, the use of the conjunction has made the sentences easier and simpler to understand. And now uh, we're going into the last introduction, which is the interjection. The interjection. So when we have done something on the interjection right now, that means we have really fully introduced the eight parts of speech. All right. So we said that the interjection is a word used to express some sudden feeling. Um. Interjection is a word used to express some sudden feeling. So you see, sometimes you see people shout or show surprise the way they talk. So that is called interjection the word used is called the word of interjection all right and there is a mark look at the board look at the board let's get the board zoomed this mark this mark follows every interjection word and it's called exclamation mark The exclamation mark, which means when we use the word of interjection, especially when we are surprised, when we are excited, we exclaim. It's called exclamation. Exclamation mark. All right. We have. Some examples like that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Exclamation mark showing. You see, this exclamation mark shows on the word wonderful. That's the interjection. Because the exclamation mark shows on the interjection word. We have something like, well done. You see the exclamation mark on it? 
on the word of the interjection. So we have, say, great one. I greet you. So you see, the interjection is not I greet you, it's on great one. That is wherever you see the exclamation mark, that is the that shows you the actual interjection. We have things something like watch out, there are robbers on the way. Watch out. There are robbers on the way. So the interjection simply shows sudden feeling. When you have sudden feeling, and uh, the words you use when you have that sudden feeling, whether it is a uh, word of joy or sorrow or anger, they are called interjection and noted by the exclamation. Mark. All right, you see, I have successfully introduced the eight parts of speech. I will name them. Noun. Pronoun. Verb. Adverb. Adjective. Preposition. Conjunction and interjection. Let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The eight parts of speech. So now we have laid the foundation to go into the study of English language actually. So get ready and have to really invite people, your friends and family members and everybody, tell them that English at home has kicked off in a very wonderful way. Thank you very much. I'm going to be with you again next week as we go in detail on the English at home online lesson. Thank you very much. I am CJ Maria, online English teacher. Okay.